and it was just like mom you got to download this game for me and she's like well you know sorry i'm in the middle of like a keynote address uh, for hundreds of people was there any resolution to that story like what oh my gosh Hi, you're listening to Pop-Up Podcasting. We make podcasting easy, so stick around for tips, tricks, and a behind-the-scenes look at the podcast industry. Hey, I'm Lisa, and in this episode, JP, Will, Ashley, and I are talking all about remote sessions, how they work, the do's and don'ts, and funny stories. What platforms have you tried for remote sessions? Like just the ones JP tells me to try. That's all I've tried. <laughs> I'm a real taskmaster that way. But um, I mean, like not other. No. Like I don't get into that kind of stuff. So if you're like Zoom's the best one, I'm like perfect. Yeah, I love Zoom. Fair enough. Uh, yeah, I mean we. Yeah, we as a company use primarily Zoom, and there's a few reasons for that. And right now we're we're recording this over Zoom, and the thing we do with some of our clients when uh, when quality is really uh, of the utmost importance as we record individually on on each guest's end and we have some some ways of doing that that are documented on our website uh but um yeah and that's what we're doing now so we're communicating over zoom but uh we're recording individually and then ashley's gonna put those files together and like ashley might be hearing as she's recording this over zoom those Zoom dropouts and those kind of weird sound issues that crop up on the internet. But because we're recording individually on our own computers as well, the finished product's not going to have any of that. So that's kind of that's kind of how we do it. There are a bunch of other platforms that people use and that we've we've used Skype. Um, we used to use Skype a lot more in the studio before in the pre-pandemic days. The one thing that I've been intrigued by, but haven't really gone into very much is there's platforms that automate the process of what we're doing right now, like Squadcast and Riverside FM. And I used one a long time ago called Ringer. There's another one that's really popular, Zencaster, that's more sort of audio focused. And I've looked into using these for you know, for us and for our clients. And they all end up having some fatal flaw that just makes it not work (laughs) Um, for us. Anyway, we always like to record a backup. Some of them don't play well with recording simultaneously a backup. And then if, if your main recording fails, then you lose the whole thing. And then ease of use is, is really, really important. Like we want the process to go really smoothly for our clients and for their guests and to let them talk about what they want to talk about as quickly and smoothly as possible, right? We don't want to put up a lot of barriers to that. So that's a big reason we've landed on Zoom. Zoom allows us to record multiple tracks so that if somebody's dog barks while I'm telling a profound story, uh, <laughs> we can we can edit those two layers separately and take out the dog barking platforms like Microsoft Teams don't let you do that. And uh, Zoom works well with our backup recording process. And it also just is something that people are familiar with and easy to use. And us focusing on one platform as opposed to jumping around to whatever our clients want also means that we can become experts in this platform and like really easily tell people how to make sure their microphone is set properly and different things like that. So that's kind of what's out there and and why we've landed on Zoom. Beautiful. Um, what would you say are best practices, I guess, or like what should you have ready before a remote session? Yeah, just actually, are you meaning on like uh, like on our end or on like the guest's end? Um, I mean, both if you wanted to talk about on our end as well, but I guess mostly like on the guest's end of things. Yeah, yeah, like on the guest side, I mean, there's a number of things. And like JP said, with the prevalence of, you know, uh, virtual communication now, it's it's gotten a little bit easier as a lot of people have sort of uh, adopted a lot of those best practices because it, you know, it's part of their like work uh, day and everything too, not just part of like whatever podcast they've been asked to be on, but uh, headphones, headphones, 
can only you can say it, you know mm. you shout it to the sky basically because it's you know it just makes such a big difference uh notifications plays in with the headphones as well too right they'll tell you oh yeah my phone's on silent oh yeah i think i turned off the ones on my computer and it's like well did you and then of course you know it's gonna ding when they're yeah inevitably covering whatever profound uh story or life experience they're sharing um so yeah stress the importance of headphones a lot of people will have external mics now but one of the things that it's sure you've plugged in your external mic and your position close to it and you're speaking into it but you know, when you go in and check that little menu in Zoom, is it just set to your default internal one, which, you know, can sometimes happen, especially you might have the equipment, but maybe not necessarily the know-how. So yeah, it's some little things like that, kind of the little details, uh, which is, you know, a lot of the times where we come into play is if a client was just running it on their own, they might just be happy to sit down and press record and start going. But that's when I think is part of our value added, right? Is that we're able to sort of check those boxes to make sure that everyone's set up uh, for success beforehand, because a lot of the times you might think it's straightforward, but, and Zoom is to a certain extent, but there can be little hiccups as well too. So. Yeah, I guess the only other thing I would add is that uh, when we're facilitating a session on Zoom, that means the the guest and host are coming uh, to us through the internet. So a bad internet connection can do a lot of damage to an episode just because uh, you can have a lot of dropouts or some of the words can start to sound digital. So just to try to ensure that you have a good internet connection and bonus points if you have a laptop that has an, an ether port. So you, if you have a cable for your internet at home, you can just plug it in directly. And then that'll make like a more solid connection. Yeah. And I think, I mean, uh, jumping off of that, having some awareness of what else is happening on your home network and and maybe some control over that is helpful. And I mean, this is getting into the, the technical weeds a little bit, but if you know your internet connection is not very reliable for these things, you can do things like turning off your online backup or your, your OneDrive sync or your Google Drive or your... Dropbox, things like that, that are eating up bandwidth in the background, you know, in these COVID days, trying to schedule things around maybe other family members who are doing online learning or online work meetings, basically. So the tubes aren't clogged with other stuff when you're trying to record your podcast. Yeah. And I had a session this past week where uh, we, it's, it was an, it's an audio podcast, but the video was going just because, um, we record that as a backup, just as an option as well for this particular client. And and there was tons of dropouts. So we ended up turning off the video and that solved the problem. Right. Yeah. So because the video is taking up you know, even more bandwidth than the audio. So yeah. we, we we tend to leave it on these days for a lot of clients just because people want that, that nonverbal communication side of things. But um, if it's causing problems, for sure, it's good to turn it off. And I know, Will, you brought up headphones, which obviously is is like key importance to us. Maybe it's worth quickly just mentioning. Did you mention already why people should have headphones? I just touched on like more so like the notification side, but you, you're thinking more for like uh, noise bleed and like feedback and everything. Yeah, exactly. Yep. Noise bleed has been like an issue for me in the past with certain recordings. And I'm trying to think there's another reason why. But oh, sometimes Zoom um, doesn't it do something where it will cancel somebody out quicker when they're yeah. coming through the speaker versus headphones. And it almost sounds like it's interrupting them finishing their thought. Yeah. Like the, the phenomenon that we, we hear in zoom meetings a lot where essentially, yeah, like each voice sort of, you know, cancels out the other is because of zooms sort of echo, echo cancellation. So when, because Lisa and I are both wearing headphones, this doesn't happen, but if Lisa, you know, started talking over me and I wasn't wearing headphones, her voice would come out of my speakers and go into my microphone and Zoom would be like, OK, well, we don't want a feedback situation. So I'm basically going to cut JP's microphone and then you don't hear the end of my sentence. So, yeah, we've we've run into that a lot. And it's it's definitely a struggle to to get clients to wear headphones as often as we would like. But um, it's, you know, everything we say to our clients is in the service of a better finished product. <laughs> it's not it's not just because we're we're dictators and we like to boss people around. What are some issues or like some funny stories that uh, you guys have 
run into during this past year? Like because that are COVID related? Well, not COVID related, like somebody but like getting remote sick? related. Like that? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> it's always hilarious. One of our guests getting sick. Um, I can hop in. I've had a couple of good ones. Not uh, not necessarily on like a traditional podcast recording. It's been more ones where there's like uh, there is like a live audience at the time. And I've had a couple like sort of, you know, just would never have happened if you weren't working from home where there was a woman giving a introduction to a very large conference, hundreds of people in attendance. And uh, her son, you could hear like she was on video as well, too. And you could see her like look up and she was clearly looking at something on the other side of her uh, camera. And she started kind of gesturing with a hand to like sort of like a shooing gesture. <laughs> And uh, yeah, her son just appears on camera and it was just like asking her to download, I don't know, some game. Who knows what? I'm sure it was very important. But, uh, you know, being like, mom, you got to download this game for me. And she's like, well, you know, sorry, I'm in the middle of like a keynote address uh, for hundreds of people. She's like, get your father to do it, you know, probably also working from home. And the kid's like, oh, he doesn't know how to do anything. And so, like, you know, I guess went to the father already, was not satisfied with uh, the effort he was giving and transitioned over to uh, the mom. But uh, yeah, so she's having to sort of like barter with her son over whether or not uh, she can have this time to uh, finish her keynote. And her video just dropped. She disconnected. She just dropped off. So and I still don't know to this day what I assume that the son, like, I don't know if he hit power or what he did but she yeah just totally dropped off of it and you know and that's a person who was not prepared to speak to hundreds of people has to hop in and try oh, and smooth things gosh. over and go from there which was hilarious my uh my favorite one that i've encountered so far was actually with will i was uh in on a session with him and Everybody involved in the session heard this, and I never heard it in the moment. I guess I just maybe wasn't paying attention. But when I went back to edit it, it was like the guys that were hosting, their guest, I should say, in the background, there was a blood-curdling scream. Oh, oh and yeah. It, <laughs> I, that, that little clip literally plays rent free in my head all the time and i'll just think of it randomly and probably for the rest of my life but like that was fun that was very fun ashley was there any resolution to that story like what i don't what? think so i don't even yeah, think we addressed it in the scream? moment like no, i think we it never just did. like just kept like the interview going like no one was like is everyone <laughs> yeah, like even flinch yeah that's why i was like i had no idea that that happened until i went to go edit it yeah, I definitely dropped a marker when it happened, yeah, but uh, yeah. I think that was the only reaction. <laughs> I'll say also, we've talked a lot about the things that can go wrong, but it's been interesting to switch over to doing things remotely during COVID. And I mean, from a from the perspective of our, of our business and our ability to serve our clients, like it's been kind of cool because we've had a lot of times where, you know, the three of us are running sessions simultaneously from our homes, which having only one studio we we weren't able to do that before so that's been kind of cool and then our clients also some of them were were only interested or only looking for local guests before the pandemic and uh once we started doing things remotely that sort of opened up their eyes to oh we can bring somebody in from another country or another city that's been pretty cool and and then you know also clients we never would have had come to us pre-COVID have found us online and the emphasis that we now have on remote recording has led to some interesting work like Craig Gibson's The Crow Patrol that we mentioned uh, in another episode. He lives in, in the US in another country and brings in guests from all over, uh, mostly all over the US. That's been kind of a cool silver lining to uh, you know, not the greatest year <laughs> um, <laughs> in other ways. Ended on a positive note. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Thanks for checking out Pop Up Podcasting, podcasting made easy. If you're interested in learning more about podcasting or starting your own podcast, you can find us at popuppodcasting.ca where you can download our free guide, Podcasting at Work. <laughs>